Hello fellow hams. Well today's bench project is a Tentex Scout 555. It's a 50 watt radio. Uh, the uh, uh, complaint from the owner is that its power output was only putting out 5 watts instead of 50. And uh, I hooked it up. I also noticed we don't seem to have any receive audio so I'm going to figure that out. No, it's not a squelch. So, uh, yeah, no receive audio. Uh, frequency tuning seems to work. And when I key down, okay, I don't know if you can see that meter. This meter is set to forward. And it's showing that we're putting out full power, and that's showing 50. Now, when I first powered it up, I was only getting 5 watts out, and I wiggled the band module, and I got it popped right up to 50. So I think we just got a connection problem back here. I was worried we were going to have bad finals, but we've we've we're getting yeah that's a that's a solid 50 watts out right there into the dummy load. So uh, I think we just got a connection problem here where the back of the band modules go. Each band module has a local oscillator and um, filtering, and then this section back here you see these two coaxial connectors and this shielded can over here. Um, the power output from the from the final amp goes through here and this is actually the low pass filter for the final amp in the in the band module so your uh, your rf is right you know passed right through here there's probably a connection issue back here with these coaxial jacks i wonder how they've got that set up but we'll take a look at that and then it uses pc board edge connections here for the uh um for the band module and these are notorious and in fact I can see on this 40 meter module little bitty dark marks in there. Let me see if I can zoom in and show this to you. There we go. See those little dark marks there on the fingers? Those are where the connectors make their connections to the blades in the in the jack inside there and those dark marks are the result of a slight bit of motion. They're actually dirt. They're they're ground up metal dust. So these PC board edge connectors are notorious for getting dirty and uh, and not making good contact. So we'll clean each of these on the band modules and uh, we'll see what's going on inside the radio here once I open the case up and take a look at the connectors. I don't know why we're not getting any receive audio. It could be related, but uh, yeah, there's there is no sound whatsoever. No hiss and nothing. So uh, we got to figure that out too. So that's today's project, the Ten Tech Scout 555. And uh, here we go. All right, we're inside the Ten Tech, and uh, it's a pretty classic construction in here. Just regular old PC boards, through hole design. And they've got these connectors that are wire, well, pin, pin connectors. And they're all, oh, they're, they're, they're really loose. They, they don't have a lot of tension on those pins. So what I've been going, doing is I've been going through with each one of them. And I uh, pull the connector and I give it just a little dusting of contact cleaner. And then I exercise that over the pins a little bit doing those one at a time and then they've also got these coaxial connectors see tiny little coax connectors and I do the same thing I just give them a little squirt of contact cleaner and I exercise them in and out a few times rotate them a little bit so I'm meticulously going through one connector at a time pulling the connector little contact cleaner exercise it clean the you know clean the mating surfaces the uh, band modules have these edge connectors, which are basically just solder pads, and uh, the solder gets old. So for each of those, I've taken a, a real fine grit sandpaper and just brushed it a little bit just to, to make it nice and shiny again, get the dirt off of there. And then these coaxial connectors here, where the RF passes through, 
to clean those because I can look in there and I can see where they're they're tarnished really bad and that's an RF connection from the power amplifier through to the antenna so what I do there is I take a little contact cleaner and I just spritz the inside of that connector a little bit and I take a coaxial connector and I just exercise that in and out a few times and turn it to clean the yeah nice and shiny to clean the dirt off the mating surfaces so we get good connection there again. Progress. Uh, still wasn't getting any receive audio. I plugged in headphones. I don't know if you can hear that. We are getting receive audio through the headphones. But not through the internal speaker. So that's just going to be a connection or wiring issue somewhere. Well, I'm not a fan of the way these Tentex are put together. I don't know how they assemble these at the factory. This is uh, crazy. They don't have a wiring harness. They've got individual runs with these pin edge connectors between all the boards. And it's just a, a spiderweb mess of wire and connectors. But I managed to get the speaker assembly out so I could see down in here and measure things. The uh, I thought the headphone jack was the problem because it's a switchable jack. Audio comes into it and there's a pin that's, that passes audio to the speaker as long as there's no jack plugged in. But that's good. So I owned out the speaker and I found out that its voice coil is open. It's supposed to be a 4 ohm speaker and it's reading infinity. Uh, so <clears throat> its voice coil is blown. Now the speaker is glued in here to this metal hole it's not mounted in with screws, it's, it's glued. So I have to have a speaker that's exactly the right diameter to match that hole. I'm going to look through the ones that I have, but I don't know that I have one that's going to match. We'll find out. <clears throat> Hopefully I do. And I can pry this out and glue in a, another speaker. The other thing I found out with these band modules, um, the clearance is silly. You've got this edge connector here and the plastic plastic shell is right beside it and I was measuring the depth in here and uh, what I found out is this plastic shell hits the edge of plugs that come into the PC board that this slides into and that prevents this connector from fully seating the pins are making contact about a, a 30 second of an inch in on this edge connector and you can't get it any further in because this plastic shell hits the uh, hits the plugs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this plastic shell off and I'm going to file this down about a sixteenth of an inch along here to eliminate that contact point and allow this plug to to seat better into the connector. Well, we got the old speaker out. We got a new one wired in, and we got audio. How about that? Now all I gotta do is uh, mount this new speaker back in here somehow. <laughs> Clearances are tight. There's connectors right here that the magnet just barely wants to touch, so I gotta figure that out. Progress. Okie dokie. Hopefully you can see that meter. It's on the 300 watt scale, and that's about 52 watts out. So uh, we got full power. How about that? Let's see how sensitive the receiver is. I'll unhook the dummy load. Go to my external antenna. Oh, actually, I'll be right back. I gotta go upstairs and switch the antenna over.
nice narrow filter on the scout. You can narrow that filter right down and she is really quiet. Thanks for watching.